In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make your black and white images pop. Plus, I have a major announcement. And no, the major announcement isn't that Squarespace is sponsoring this video. It's a bit more major than that. At least to me it is. I'm proud to announce that I finally have my Ultimate Lightroom Classic training course ready. The course is going to sell for $99. I currently have it on pre-sale for $69. So if you purchase it during the pre-sale period, you'll save 30 bucks. The pre-sale will last until the course goes live. The course is going to go live on September 20th, 2023 at 12 noon. Now, you may be wondering, what is the Ultimate Lightroom Classic training course? Well, so far, the course consists of 67 how-to videos that you'll have lifetime access to, plus there are PDF outlines for each of those videos that you could download, and you could download all of the raw files for the videos. Now, I purposely said that so far the course consists of because I plan on adding to the course. If I think of another Lightroom topic that the course should cover, I will do videos on it and add it to the course. And of course, each of those videos will have PDF outlines. And if I use any new RAW files in those videos, you could download those RAW files as well. Now, you may be wondering, is the Ultimate Lightroom Classic training course for me? I'm new in Lightroom or I'm pretty experienced in Lightroom. Well, I set up the course so that it will help everyone. If you're brand new to Lightroom, I suggest you start with the quick start section. Here I have a number of videos that will help you get up and running in Lightroom Classic as soon as possible. If you're a little more experienced in Lightroom, you could jump around. You could jump to the workspace and watch the videos there or the videos I have on importing and exporting, the library module, the develop module, masking, tools in Lightroom, the map module, the book module, slideshow module, print module, web module, and just miscellaneous videos that I have on Lightroom Classic. Now, again, the course is in pre-sale. It will go live September 20th, 2023 at 12 noon. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website. You could check out the course, or you could just jump to anthonymorganti.com. Now, back to our video. Oh, and by the way, I have no affiliation with Squarespace. They're not sponsoring this video at all. Now, Let's convert this image into black and white and make it pop. When you have a color image in Lightroom, on the right-hand panel, you'll have an HSL color tab. When you convert it to black and white by going to the basic tab and clicking on black and white mix, that HSL color tab turns into a black and white tab. If you roll that open, you'll notice at the top it says black and white mix, and there are a number of sliders. Each of those sliders represent a color. Red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. With those sliders, you could affect the luminance level of what was that color in the color image. For example, we know the sky was blue, right? If I go to the blue slider and I move it to the left, whatever was blue in the color image will get darker in this black and white image. If I move it to the right, whatever was blue in the color image will get lighter in this black and white image. And that is the black and white mix. So you could come in and affect the luminance levels of what were the colors in the color image and it will make the black and white image pop. Now, if you don't want to come in and move the sliders individually, you can get an auto black and white mix by clicking this button. You'll see the sliders automatically set to what Lightroom thinks they should be. Personally, I never use auto mixes. I don't like them. I just don't like them. So I'm gonna reset this by clicking on black and white mix, just click on those words and it will reset all the sliders. Now, usually the way I go about adjusting these sliders for a landscape image is I do the sky first. That's just the way I do it. You don't have to do it like I do it. Experiment, see what works for you. I tend to make my blue skies darker, so I'll move the blue slider to left. Then what I like to do when I have like a lot of green in the image, like here we have a lot of grass and there's some trees, I like to try to gain some tonal variance throughout the that uniform gray of the grass and the trees. So what I'll do is I'll go to the yellow slider and I'll make whatever was yellow in the original black and white image brighter by moving that to the right. Then I'll go to the green slider and I'll make whatever was green in the original color image. I should say, I think I said black and white before. Anyway, I'll make that darker like that. Now, those are kind of the obvious colors for this image. Now, we're not sure probably if there are any other colors in this image that are represented by these sliders. For example, 
I'm not sure if there's red. So what I'll do is I'll just go up to red and move it, see if it affects anything. Affecting the grass a little bit, like just a tiny bit over there. So it really doesn't do much. Orange, I think the orange will affect the grass a little more. Yeah, it does. So you can move that around till you like it. Aqua will probably affect the sky a little bit. Yeah, it does. And it affects the grass too. Isn't that interesting? So you can mess around with that. Um, we did blue. Purple, sometimes purple affects the sky, believe it or not. And it is affecting the sky, as you can see. And I don't think magenta is in this image at all. Oh, that magenta is affecting the sky as well. Kind of interesting. So what I'll do is I'll just then, to rehash for a landscape image, I go to blue first, then I go to yellow. I usually make the blue darker. I go to yellow, make that a little brighter. I go to green, make that a little darker. Then I just go to each slider and just move them around like I did and see what they do until I get the mix I like. Here is a before I use the black and white mix and after. I think you'll agree, it is a very different image after I did the black and white mix. There's before and there's after. Now I'm going to reset this. There's another way you could use the black and white mix and that is with a targeted adjustment. This tool right here, this little circle is the targeted adjustment tool. Just click on it and your cursor will become the targeted adjustment tool. All you need to do is take your cursor and put it over what was a color in the color image, for example, the blue sky. And then you would click with the left mouse button and hold in that button. Now, when I do that, the cursor is going to disappear like that. So I'm holding in the left mouse button. You can't see what I'm doing. But if I push my mouse up, I'll make the blue sky lighter. If I pull down, it makes it darker. And you can see it's moving the appropriate sliders. In this case, it's moving the blue slider and that aqua slider just a little bit. So with the targeted adjustment tool, it will move the sliders that you have directly under the cursor. So we come in and try to do the grasses over here, make those brighter, those yellowish ones. Go to the darker green ones, maybe right in here, make those darker. So you could use target adjustment. I personally don't use that. I prefer to just come in and move the sliders myself. When you're done with the tool, just click on it again and you'll basically put it away. Now, I want to show you a couple more things because sometimes if you use certain profiles, you won't have access to the black and white mix. So I'm going to reset this again by double clicking on the words black and white mix. Let's go up to the basic tab and open up the profile browser. In the profile browser, let's go to a camera matching profile. Let's close everything down so it's a little easier to see. I'm going to open up the camera matching profile and we're going to find a black and white one uh, very quickly right here, monochrome R. So this is as though you had a red filter and you were shooting film but red filter on your lens in your shooting film, this is supposedly the look you would get. So we'll close down the profile browser, close down the basic tab, and if you look at the black and white tab now, it's blacked out. If I roll it open, you'll see monochrome profile applied. So with some profiles, you won't have any access at all to the black and white mix. With other profiles, it will limit it. Let me show you that. We'll open up the basic tab, go back to the profile browser, and this time we'll choose a black and white profile that comes with Lightroom Classic. We'll go to the black and white tab here and we'll find a similar one. Maybe we can find one, a black and white with a red filter right here at the very bottom. Okay, so we added this Adobe profile. We'll close this down and we'll close down the basic tab. Now you'll see the black and white mix is active. If I roll it open, the sliders are there and they do work. Like, so I could do my thing. That I normally do. But you'll notice the auto button is grayed out. You cannot get an auto black and white mix with some other profiles. So that's it. That is the black and white mix. And I believe that really will help you make a black and white image pop. Now, I just want to remind you, I have this light, Ultimate Lightroom Classic training course in pre sell I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. And thank you, everyone, for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.